Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the next in a series of Gaming Rules Quick and Dirty Reviews. In this video I am going to be telling you what I think about Roads and Boats, which was originally published in 1999. This is the fourth edition of the game. I don't quite know the differences between the versions, but this is the fourth edition. So I'm going to let you know what I think about it. I have played this game uh, eight times, according to my BGG record. I've played it uh, one player, two player, three player and four player. So it is a game that I would like to play more. So this review is based on my limited plays of the game, even though that is eight. This video has been created thanks to my Patreon campaign. So a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and to those who voted on this game being one of the games that I would review this month. If you do enjoy my content and want to support me, then check out my Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And even just a dollar a month does help. So before we start with the review, a quick story about this game. This is a game which had been on my radar for many years before I got it. There's so much about this game that is right up my alley, exactly the kind of thing I like, building a logistics network, uh, you know, producing goods, moving those goods around the board from one place to another, using those goods to build other buildings that produce other goods, exactly the kind of thing that I like in a game. The thing which put me off the game is it had a, quite a high price tag uh, for what you get. I mean, you do get a lot of counters in the game, but the price tag was quite high. Uh, and that kind of put me off doing it. And then I decided that I was going to make my own version of the game. I wasn't particularly keen on the artwork and the style within the game, so I thought I'd set about making my own version of it. And then, of course, realized that this was going to take me months to do. So I, I, I scrapped that idea. It was a crazy idea anyway. And then when I left my uh, previous job, uh, I had a retirement party. Um, yeah, retirement. So what I did is I bought myself a copy of Roads and Boats and the expansion as basically a retirement present for myself. Uh, am I happy that I made that purchase? Yes, because I've played it eight times and I, and I do want to play it again. Now... The first time we played this game, there was three of us, me, Tom and Marcus, and we sat down and we learned how to play it and we started playing it. And the start of the game was exactly what I thought it would be. I do my own thing, I move my goods, I build a woodcutter in the forest, uh, that starts generating planks, I then build a quarry here, I start doing bricks, I'm building roads, I'm doing all of that stuff. Completely independent of the other players. I have no problems with with um, multiplayer solitaire, as they call it. And, and that's the way I was playing the game. Until probably about a third to a half way through, when Tom started moving some of his donkeys through the hills, sort of towards my area. Um, and then he picked up my wood and walked off with it. So one of the things in this game, for those people who don't know, is nothing is yours. If you have tiles on a hex, they're not yours. They're anybody's. Anybody can come along and pick them up. The only things that are yours are resources that are carried on the back of one of your transports. So if you've got, you know, planks of wood on the back of a donkey, nobody can come along and steal it. But other than that, everything in the game is open. So you will go into the mountain and you will build a mine using your resources to build that mine. That mine will generate gold. If you're not there to get that gold at the time it generates it, then it sits there. And then somebody else might come along and steal it. That game that we played turned very, very interactive in a very short space of time. And depending on the map you're using for the game, you can have games where it is very much a solitaire game, um, but you can have games which are extremely interactive. And that interaction doesn't come about until, you know, like halfway through the game where players start meeting each other. Again, depending on the map that you're playing. So it is a very interactive game, absolutely. It can be absolutely brutal, but that's driven by the other players. I mean, if, if, if another player builds a boat, for example, and sails it up a river right into where your home is, where you've been stockpiling resources, loads all of them on and then sails off with them, you know, that, that's not brutal as in, uh, you know, the game has drawn an event and you're all completely screwed. It's the actions of the other players and you've really got to be careful for that during the game. So, yes, on the surface, this is a, a logistics game, building your own little network and moving resources around, but actually it is very, very interactive. Now, just going back to the start of the game, and I'm going to mention this as kind of a negative point in the game, but 
it is very common with a lot of splotter games in that your first few moves could be pre-programmed and some people will say they are pre-programmed anybody who's played many of their games will know that you can go online and here's a list of things to do in your first five turns or ten turns again with this game you have a different map layout but there are a number of common things that you should do at the start of the game and it does feel a bit pre-programmed saying that there are a number of different choices you have within that but uh, as I say, it's not as much of a problem in this game as the other games because of the interaction. You know, you can have your, your plan and say, right, I'm going to go into the forest, I'm going to build that, and that might work to start with, but then later on in the game, uh, that won't work. One thing that this game will reward you is certainly playing it once or twice, because the winner of this game is the one with the most victory points at the end of the game. But you get victory points only really in, in two different ways certain commodities, resources, goods, whatever they're called, they will get you points at the end of the game. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get these certificates. These certificates are worth a huge number of points. But to get the certificates, you need uh, two lots of gold coins, I think it is, and some paper. Okay, so let's work backwards. How do we get the gold coins? Well, to get the gold coins, you need to build the mint and you need to provide the mint with actual raw gold, which you will smelt down and turn into coins. So you basically have to work backwards and you have to realize, right, that is my ultimate goal. How am I gonna do that? I'm gonna have to do that by doing this. And then I'm gonna need fuel, so you need a source of fuel as well. And basically everything that you're doing should be leading towards that. I think it's fair to say, I'm gonna say it anyway, if one player builds a stock certificate, a share certificate, whatever they're called, uh, and nobody else does, they're probably going to win because they are worth such a massive amount of points. There's also a monument that you're building in the game, which is this board here, and this will get filled in as the game goes on. And this is kind of like a timer. Well, it is a timer, because if you don't build things in the monument, the neutral player comes along and builds them in here. And then at the end of the game, players will get points based on um, how many blocks they've got in each particular uh, row of the monument. So they're the two main ways of getting points. So as I say, it's you've got to work backwards, you've got to plan, right, I'm going to build that, what are the things that I need in order to be able to get that, and how am I going to be able to get those things on this particular map? So I'm going to touch at this point on the rule book and the components. Now, the rule book, now this is the fourth edition of the game, I'm assuming that this is a more up-to-date rule book than the first ones, it's, it's okay. It's a bit cheap looking. It's in black and white. Uh, some parts are fairly minimal. They could have done with some more examples. Other parts do have lots of examples, which is good. I have found out recently that I've been playing the rules for walls incorrectly. Um, now, whether that's because they're not clear in here or, um, or we, ju we just got it wrong, but the rules about walls, yeah, I need to go back and, and, and read it again before we... So yeah, the rule book was, was okay. Um, as I say, everything was in here. It just, it could have done with a little bit more work and a colour one with some nicer examples would be nice. Um, the game also comes with, I mentioned at the start, the scenarios. And there are multiple scenarios in this game. So these are scenarios for two players, uh, three players, um, uh, four players, and then the solo ones. And there's more of these online. Now, I told, yeah, so this, the progress chart, right? So this is the progress chart in the middle of the rule book. Can't understand that at all. It's probably more confusing, more, does more harm than good. If you are going to get the game, go online and get this. This is a player aid. It kind of shows, I mean, it looks daunting. The game, I'm going to say, isn't that complex in terms of, you know, the kind of medium to heavyweight your eyes I play. But the complexity comes in all of the different choices you've got and where you need to build all of the buildings and what all of the different buildings do. Um, components wise, don't buy this game for the components. You, you buy this game for the gameplay. I'm afraid to say the, the components are fairly, they're not good in my opinion. The, uh, the artwork and the graphic design, I mean, the front cover of the box, in, in, a, in an age where board game artwork is generally gorgeous, this is one of the worst box covers that I've ever seen. I, it's just, it's really not good. I like, I like nice artwork. The graphic design, the artwork that's been used for the, all the individual counters, it's functional, 
just about, but it's, it's very, very simple. Um, some of them are a little bit too similar. I know the argument of, well, if it's functional and it's clear, then it doesn't matter what it is. And, and I get that, but in some of these, it's, it's not that functional. Um, some of them are a little bit too similar. So yeah, and some of the counters were, were misprinted or miscut. It's just a bit, a bit, yeah, not great. I wasn't impressed by that at all. The tiles and the observant ones amongst you might have noticed that these tiles that I have in front of me are not the ones that come with the game. I really did not like the artwork on the tiles at all. So I completely redid it and did my own version. So I'm going to show you some photos now of what the original tiles look like and also what my ones look like. Um, you know, again, art is a subjective thing, but I really did not like the ones that came with the game. I felt they looked ugly and too simple and I didn't like the colours. So I, I did my own version, which you can see here. The other thing with the game, and uh, so this is a, a bit onto the fiddly gameplay. The game comes with a plastic sheet that you're supposed to cut over, uh, put over this and you draw your roads that you've built on it, your roads and your bridges that you, that you build in the game. You're supposed to draw on it, which is a little fiddly. Um, also, stacking these little tiny tokens is a bit fiddly. And when you build a mine, these are the mines. Yeah, it's a brown wooden cylinder. Yeah, but this is a mine. When you build a mine, it comes with three gold and three iron. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take three gold counters and three iron counters, two, three, and the mine is supposed to have a little number on the top, and then you're supposed to get a little bag with that number on, and you put these tokens in the bag, and then each turn you draw one at random to see what you get. It's just a bit fiddly. Um, what I do is, is I shuffle them uh, and I put them face down on top of the mine. And then each round you reveal one of them, which is again a bit fiddly. Um, but yeah, you know, even moving your pieces on the board, knowing which ones have moved, picking up things, putting them on the back of your donkey, moving them around, it is really, really fiddly. I think for me, if you are going to be concerned about that, I mean, when the board is full and you've got you, you've got you know transports everywhere, and you're having to go. So this boat can move five and pick up four, and I've got to remember where it moved and where it picked up and everything else. And have these resources moved? I'll unload them. Can I load them again? You've basically got to you know lie your donkeys down to say right, I've moved them this turn, which is possible with the donkeys. It's not really possible with some of the other ones. It can be very fiddly. If that is your kind of thing and you like doing that and you have no problems keeping track of stuff, then go ahead. Um, but just, just a word of warning, that's, that's what it is. Another thing that I didn't like about the game is, uh, components wise, you, you track your, you can do research, um, which is cool. You know, in the game you can do research. But the game comes with, uh, and I don't have them in this box because I've moved them out, but the game comes with big brown glass beads that you're supposed to put on this to show that you've researched that technology. Two problems. A, the glass beads are too big. They don't fit on here. So if you've got two technologies next to each other, it, it just doesn't fit. And second, once you've put a glass bead on it, you then can't see it. So you don't know what you've got. What I've done is I have made little counters uh, and you can put that counter on the thing to show that you have researched that technology. So yeah, I've kind of pimped up my version a bit with with extra components. So yeah, over, overall, I'm being very critical of the components and I, I, I think that's fair. If it's not a problem for you and you think the game is fantastic, then, then that's good. And I do think the game is a great game. I don't have anything like it in my collection. I'm really happy that I got it for a game of this genre, of the, you know, fiddly little logistics network, picking up stuff and moving it around. This is the one I wanted and the, I'm very happy with it. But yeah, components wise, nothing good to say about them, I'm afraid. Other things about the game, which uh, it can run a bit long. Um, it, it can be a very slow game, especially with, with four players and it can run quite long so you need to be aware of that this is not a one hour game this will probably take you three four hours maybe to play i think with repeated plays that playtime will come down but it, it it can be a very long game another thing about the game is a good friend of mine travis hill this is his favorite game of all time so similar to what i did with the dominant species review i'm just going to put on screen a few words from what travis thinks about the game 
The beauty of Roads and Boats is its diversity, ranging from its solitaire play, a laid-back puzzle that's incredibly difficult to solve, to its multiplayer contests and sneaky donkey manoeuvring. Roads and Boats has something for everyone, literally. There's so much stuff in the box that everyone can leave game night with planks and geese. Whilst the logistics of the game remain the same game to play, the interaction and variability of players' actions really show the dynamic nature of what Roads and Boats is. It's this reason, among dozens more, as to why this game quite literally and figuratively sits at the top of my game shelf. So, thank you very much to Travis for his thoughts on the game. If you've played this game and you enjoy it, then please let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope it's helped you give... Um, I hope it's helped give a bit of information about the game. Talking about it now and looking at it, I've not played this game for months and I do want to play it again. So although I've been quite down on the components and the fiddliness and everything else, I do think it's a great game. I do want to play it again and I look forward to doing so. So that's about it. Let's wrap the review up there. Again, if you did enjoy this review and any other content that I produce, please consider supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And until next time, take care and thanks for watching.